let's talk about everyone's favorite quarterback to talk about, Aaron Rodgers. Is he still good? Yes. Is he still MVP caliber good? That's the interesting question, I think. So first, what happened last year? Let's look at his box score stats for every season he's been a pro. He has a very impressive career passing passer rating of 103.6. He's coming off of back-to-back seasons of incredible passer rating years, a 121.5 season in 2020, where he had 48 touchdowns to just five interceptions. Then he had a almost as impressive 37 touchdowns to just four interceptions, a 111 nine passer rating. That's an insane season as well. The guy's been uh, on fire with back-to-back MVPs. However, last year, not so good. Only 26 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. 12 interceptions, the second most of his career and the most since essentially his first season as an alt- uh, uh, you know full-time starter. Only the third time in his career he had over 10 interceptions. So that's also very fascinating. And, you know, uh, just his touchdowns were down as well. It was not as impressive of a season, at least in 2019, when he, you know, his touchdowns were down for sure. But his efficiency was still pretty good. And he still only had four interceptions that year. But these are just box score stats, right? Box score stats don't tell the whole story, and they can often be misleading. So we're going to get into the film in just a second, but let's look at one other chart right before it. How about his pro football focus grade, which is, you know, not as bad. A 77.5 grade is certainly better, I would say, than a 91.1 passer rating still not quite as dominant as the past two years where he posted an insane uh you know best of his career 95 grade in 2020 the 89.4 grade was a little bit lower but still very impressive in 2021 a 77.5 grade is solid but certainly not what we expect from Rodgers it is again uh starting from 20 uh, 2008 on he only has one season with a lower grade that was in 2015 Interestingly enough, 2015 was also the, uh, you know, the second worst passer rating season of his career. This past season was the worst passer rating season of his career that he was a full-time starter for. So, okay, I think that's reasonable to say that from a regular quarterback standards, he's still playing okay. But from his standards, it seems like things are going wrong. Well, why? Well, I mean, the first point, going over here, it's obvious, right? I mean, something that I'm sure Packers fans have already written in the comments is, why is this even a video? We all know what went wrong with Aaron Rodgers last year. He had nobody to throw it to, and there were certain examples where that was absolutely true. This one is one of them, where the Lions are in zone coverage. Rodgers is going to take the snap, and he's going to look uh, a couple different areas, but nothing seems to be too open. Again, he could make a quick throw and try to get a first down on third down to try to get to the 15-yard line, but this is tough, and nothing looks particularly great. Again, this is the game where the Packers are trying to get to the uh, to the playoffs. If they won this game, they would have made the playoffs. I think people have kind of forgotten how close they ended up being to a playoff spot after that disastrous start to the year. Rodgers tries to scramble out and make something happen, but Aiden Hutchinson tracks him down, gets the sack right there, ball comes out after he already hit the ground, but still a, you know, a bad play by the Packers, but more of a bad play by the receiving core, and there's just no denying that that was a big part of what went wrong for Green Bay. Although, let's talk about this play, because it wasn't just the receiving core was having issues. There were legitimate mistakes from Rodgers that were uncharacteristic in 2022. This one is one of them. It got a bit, a lot of attention at the time. I'm showing a lot of Lions uh, plays for some reason, both in both games they played them. Just a lot of interesting, unique examples uh, here where the way this play works is you're going to have a receiver try to draw a good amount of attention, get play. It's Sammy Watkins, actually, who you're trying to get. You know, he gets the attention over the middle. David Bakiari, who was reported as eligible on this play, he then runs out and runs a route. Kind of a clever uh, play call here. Some people disliked the play call at the time. I have no issue with it. I think it makes sense. Rodgers takes the snap. He's going to, again, run this play as designed. Kind of has to throw off balance. That's a little bit tricky, but there is an opportunity for this to be made. This throw was a bit underthrown, though. Actually, it was massively underthrown and got intercepted. Again, 
I don't know what to make of that. I'm not going to try to make a huge deal out of certain select plays, but there's no denying that these are the plays that you pretty much just never saw from Aaron Rodgers at all. Part of his greatness is that he doesn't make these types of plays. So when he starts making these types of plays, while it's not a huge deal compared to, you know, most quarterbacks will make these types of plays every now and then, it's just surprising seeing it from number 12 in Green Bay. Like, this one was another one where a part of me wonders if Rodgers felt like maybe he had to do too much at times. This is a zone coverage play, especially early on in the year. Like, uh, you know, trying to hit Robert Tunyon, who's going to be running a route that will get into a gap in coverage. Watch how when Rodgers takes the snap, you see that right here. I mean, you know, Rodgers sees that where Tunyon is going, so he knows uh, at this point what the route is is, so it's not like there's a miscommunication uh, here. Maybe he expects Tunyon to kind of uh, flatten out the route a little bit, but it's still a dangerous throw because when you're throwing this far away, defensive backs can adjust to it. That's what happens. You can blame Tunyon if you want, but it's also a great defensive play and just a riskier throw than Rodgers typically makes. Rodgers typically does not throw that one there. So there's several things at play for sure, but one of those things was Rodgers was taking more chances in 2022 than he typically does. But hey, maybe if you get a more talented receiver or maybe just now that you have Watson doing his thing, maybe Rodgers will stop taking those chances so much. Also, this one is an interesting one where what's going to happen here is this is a it's a one on one matchup on the outside with Alan Lazard. So that's the situation. And, you know, uh, there were a lot of stats that came out about how good the Packers were against cover one, but they're kind of misleading. It was a lot of bulk stats, things like the Packers have a ton of touchdowns against cover one or against single safety deep coverages, which was true, but they had so many snaps against uh, single safety deep coverages. Teams basically realized, uh, I think it was maybe the Washington game might have been an example where teams essentially realized if you play single safety deep, the Green Bay Packers basically do not have receivers who can consistently win on the outside, and then that changed once Watson got, came along, but the point still remains that if Watson was not getting open on the outside, they had to turn to guys like Lazard, who they tried to make work on the outside. Watch how when this play begins. You know, a lot of times it did not work on the outside. A lot of times he was not getting a ton of separation. He doesn't have a ton of separation here. This is not an easy play from Rodgers. However, look at this ball. This is just a thing of absolute beauty. 50 yards down the field. It was incomplete, but there was a flag for pass interference. And it's just a great throw. Even if there was no flag, uh, you know, I'm, I'm evaluating Rodgers, not the receiver here. Uh, just a great play from Rodgers to be able to make this stuff happen. And again, if you maybe get uh, you know him in a situation where he has guys on the outside who can really win, whether that's you know in Green Bay or not in Green Bay, that's a situation where I think it could really could really help. Those are kind of my thoughts on uh, Aaron Rodgers as a whole with the Green Bay Packers. I do think that there's a lot uh, you know a lot he still does very well. This wasn't his best year, and when you get to a certain age, every time you kind of have a down year, people are going to wonder, is this it? Is this where you're, uh, you know, going to fall off? And we just saw this a couple years ago where he had a down year. And while the box score stats say that he was worse this year than he was uh, back in 2019, you know, uh, his PFF grade was still worse, but it wasn't as significant. It wasn't that massively down, and his grade in 2019 wasn't that bad. And I think the tape, you know, I was pounding the table saying he's not washed up after 2019. I didn't expect him to go on and win back-to-back -back MVPs, but I, I thought that he, they, people overreacted to that year. I think this one warrants more of a reaction than that year did, but I still don't think that he is washed up necessarily. I would still bet on him having a good 2023, assuming he still plays. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.